it's draft day, a day that may bring some changes for the Chicago Bulls. I don't know how much expectations are around that, but we do have an article from Darnell Mayberry who says that AK has the green light from ownership to take the team in whatever direction he chooses to. We're going to talk about that. DJJ opting out and what it could mean and going over the blockbuster trade that went down yesterday as well. We're going to get into all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm the host here, Hayes. You can follow me right off the top at CEO Hayes if you choose to do so. You can also follow the show at Bulls Central Pod on every social media platform. So we're going to get with the thing that we had. We had an emergency episode on it yesterday, so I'm not going to dive too deep into it. But Derek Jones Jr., after initially in April saying that he was going to opt into his contract, decided to go ahead and opt out of the contract. And I honestly think this is a one of a, a, one of the best-case scenarios for the Bulls. Not that I, I don't like DJJ as a player. When you look at DJJ, what he had playing the role of backup center primarily when he played the most, um, always finding a way to impact the game, whether it be his defense, shot blocking, making uh, highlight reel dunks. DJJ was a role player that I thoroughly enjoyed his time with the Chicago Bulls. And if it's coming to an end, it was a nice two seasons with DJJ, even though, yeah, he had a lot of injuries, up and down play, things like that. Oh, I should say an up and down role um, with Billy Donovan, not using him in a consistent area. But I look at DJJ personally, and I think that if he was able to play more of the 3-4 instead of playing backup center a lot of times for the Chicago Bulls, I just always look at what that could have bring, especially when you look at what he did bring shot blocking wise at times as well. I think winning what helping win like two games just this past season with having timely blocks and things like that. Like I thoroughly enjoy DJJ's time here. But the reason why I say this could be a benefit for the Bulls is that yesterday came out that the uh the, the luxury tax is actually uh, has three more three million dollars more of room um with that. So that got added to the Bulls. And then also now with the DJJ opting out, it puts the Bulls in a situation to where they can use their full mid-level exception of $12.2 million without going into the luxury tax. And that's major. When you look at the Bulls before, they were looking at using between 6 and $7.5 million of that mid-level exception. And now to be able to use all of it without going into the luxury tax. And if Andre Drummond also decides to opt out, even though he said he's going to be opting in, if he does opt out, that opens up the door for the Bulls also using their biannual exception on top of that to add to the team. So, you know, we'll ultimately see if the Bulls use that extra uh, flexibility. It may also open the door for Javante Green to return, um, who I had pretty much had Mark as, as going just because of the similarities of, of him and DJJ. But now maybe Javante does end up staying, depending on what he can get out there in the open market. But one of the more interesting things that this could open up the door to, and we actually talked about this on an episode of the Locked on Bulls that will not be released because the trade changed, but is that Patrick Beverly tweeted and saying that the Bulls should run it back. And we know that Patrick Beverly's initial ask, at least what he talked about on his podcast, was he said he went between 15 and $18 million. Now, I do not necessarily think he's going to get that. But now with the Bulls being able to offer $12.5 million, if they do decide to run it back, which, again, I'm not an advocate for. I want to see changes made to this team. I don't want to see a full blow up, but I do want to see changes made to this team. But with that being said, could the Bulls now look to pivot Use that full mid-level exception to bring Pat Bev back to the team. That's one of the questions. Now, I would hope that the Bulls would explore other options. Uh, while I did enjoy what Pat Bev brought to the team, I just know that there are better point guards out there on the market, especially when you look at just how things have shaken up. The biggest question is, is how or if the Bulls can get somebody to sign for that $12.5 million. So, you know, ultimately, we'll see, but I do think that this opens up the door. It allows the Bulls to maybe go up another tier of free agents rather than scraping the bottom of the barrel for somebody who's going to take $6.5 million to come here. And ultimately, we'll see, right? We'll just see what that means. But one of the blockbuster trades that went down yesterday that was changed initially, uh, it initially looked like it was going to go down between the Wizards, the Clippers, and the Celtics. Uh, it seems like the, the Clippers kind of backed out that deal. Malcolm Brogdon was originally supposed to go to the Clippers. That deal fell apart. And the deal changed last night to where now the Celtics are getting Christophe Porzingis. Marcus Smart is going to the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, and then Tyus Jones, who was a target for us, uh, I, well, I hope Tyus Jones is actually going to the Washington Wizards. The Boston Celtics also get two first-round picks in this deal as well. Christophe Porzingis is opting into his $36 million contract. 
for uh, this Boston Celtics who are going to have him for basically a one-year rental before they make a long-term decision. So again, that next year is when that uh, that more penalizing second tax apron kicks in uh, in the NBA, so they could possibly avoid that as well. But overall, this was a trade that it, when it initially fell apart, it was like, okay, they're still going to find a way to get Przingis to Boston. But now to be to, to be sending Marcus Smart to Memphis, who they're going to need a starting point guard while the 25 games that John Morant is out. And then you also look how he can factor in playing either next to John Morant or backing John Morant up in certain lineups as well with Desmond Bain. He can play next to either one of those players. The Memphis Grizzlies get a dog and a, and a potential six man of the year on top of that by adding that to his team. And that's not any shade to Tyus Jones, who played really well in the time that, that John Morant was out. But this, this is a trade that I think every team gets exactly what they want and need. Now, the Washington Wizards, are they going to hold on to Tyus Jones? We know he's, a, what, 27 years old. Uh, they, he could try to force a buyout. He is in the last year of his contract. They could look to move to flip him somewhere else by the trade deadline, something like this. When the Memphis Grizzlies said that they were going to look to, to send Tyus Jones to a place where he could be the starting point guard, I'm sure we did not think that in mind it was going to be the Washington Wizards. So, you know, we'll end up seeing what happens with that. But, hey, blockbuster trade going down before the draft. I wish it was us. It's not us. But let's pivot, right? So now we move into the section where the, 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 all eyes are on the Bulls and to see what they're going to do with this draft. And so Darnell Mayberry had an article at The Athletic. I suggest you guys go and read it. I'll try to make sure I link it down in the description. Sometimes I hit or miss on, on, on adding things into the description. Sue me. I'm human. I'm a one-man show here. Uh, but with that said, what does that mean, right? When you look at that as tangible, like he has the green light, the AK has the green light from the ownership to go in any direction he's want. Does he, that, that does include the luxury tax? Because if that includes the luxury tax, then we're now, now we're, we're talking about possibly being able to cook. Does it mean go full rebuild? Does it mean, hey, you have the permission to trade anybody? What does it mean from a, from, from ownership to say you now, AK has the green light to go whatever direction he wants? Because if that direction then is, I want to pay the luxury tax to add talent to a core that AK seems to like, does that mean that we have the green light to do that, right? Do we have the green light to, 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 to do that and maybe aggregate salaries, right? And I think with all eyes being on the Bulls on what they're going to do in the draft, right? And let's go over some of the options, right? Just because, and I want to be clear here because some people will say, and I know we have our pessimistic, ready to fire everybody up Bulls fans, if AK does not make a trade, in this draft, that does not necessarily mean that he that the article is false, right? It just means that maybe he didn't get the move that he liked. But let's take a look at the options, right? We've heard rumors about Zach Levine and his trade uh, value and what the Bulls will want back if they move Zach Levine. Uh, Joe Cowley had a, had an article yesterday in which he talked about potentially DeMar DeRozan even being somebody that the Bulls could look to move, just not get back as much as Zach Levine. We've heard a lot about the Bulls trying to move into the first round via either, you know, removing the protections from the Portland pick. Ultimately, look, this offseason, if ownership is truly giving AK the green light, AK has no more excuses, right? AK, hopefully, he, and he talked about this in the season-ending press conferences, talked about how he was ready to present things to ownership, talking about the luxury tax at that point, and maybe in those discussions that they had and kind of laid out his vision of what he would like the team to do in the, in the next one, two seasons, whatever. And ultimately, here's the thing, right? We all know that we need some type of change, whether that change is adding, shooting, and, and a point guard to this squad and then see what this team can look like with a more modern offense, cool. If the future is we want to, we, we see Zach Levine, we see the value that he has around the league, we want to take advantage of that equity now. We may get a little bit worse initially, but we want to move that. If it's, hey, we want to move DeMar to try to move into the first round of this draft because we just think we see a guy that can help and whatever modernize this core. There's so much to be said with that. And while I would have liked to hear more so, yes, the, the AK has the ability to go into the luxury tax because that is a more clear, tangible thing. You would hope that your president of basketball operations already had the green light to build and shape the team, right? That's one of the things that's always concerning about a Jerry Reinsdorf-owned team is that how much control does AK really have, right? And yes, some of AK's decisions have not worked out. And nobody, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be the one to take away from that. I'm not going to be the one to act like this man has just made all these amazing deals. No. But when you hire a president of basketball operations, you need to let the chef cook. And so if that's what the Reinsdorfs are now doing, hats off to them. Welcome to the modern age. But ultimately, like I've said before, 
This is an offseason where I do not envy the position that Arturis Karnasova and Mark Eversley are in. I don't envy it because they have a roster that has some pieces, right? That the fans, a, a, a vocal part of the of the Bulls community wants to see the Bulls go full rebuild, which, like I've said before, it has its own level of validity to it as well, right? But now AK, who came in, do, already doing things that were kind of against his nature, if you look at his history as a GM, right? He came in, made the trade for Vooch, signed and trade for uh, DeMar DeRozan, signed Alice Caruso, another signed and trade for Lonzo Ball, right? All that happened, and it's kind of against what the way that AK operates. He typically, in his history, has held on to assets. And so, ultimately, I guess we'll see. I guess we will see what happens and if this new found freedom from ownership actually results into some into some needed changes for the Chicago Bulls team. I still don't think a full rebuild is likely. I think a retool is maybe coming. I hope that a retool may be coming, but I still think the mo- more likely scenario for this offseason is mainly running it back. I really do think that using your full now mid-level exception, we'll see what that go what what that ends up netting us, but I think for the most part we're going to run most of this roster back. And we'll maybe at the trade deadline see something, maybe another evaluation from AK. But, you know, it, it's so many questions around this team and so many questions that even on players that this front office has drafted, right? We first have to answer what's going on with Vooch, what's going on with Kobe, what, what's going on with Io DeSumo, a second round uh, a draft selection you just made two years ago, right? What's the future for Dalen Terry? What's the development plan for him and Patrick Williams? What's going on with Marco Simonovic, right? What's happening with all these things? And so if AK now, the gloves have been removed, he now has the ability to do and mold the team exactly how he wants. Like I said before, it's a little bit concerning that he did not have that leeway before, but now that we have it, it is all on you. All eyes on what on what AK and Eversley are going to do, and it starts tonight with the NBA draft. Like I said, it doesn't necessarily mean that they will move into the, into the draft, but it does start, we start looking at things. There are going to be a lot of deals that go down today. And in evaluating those deals and seeing how they could have aligned with what the Chicago Bulls could have done, right, compared to what other teams do, all eyes are going to be on if AK is leading us right or is he leading us again to stay middle of the pack. And so we'll see, man. I have my optimistic side about me with this team. I also have my pessimistic side with this team. Duality is a thing. And I think ultimately for me, looking at this team right now, we know we need something. And there is enough of a conversation to say, Go out and get the right point guard. And then let's evaluate what the talent is on this team. Then let's evaluate how the offense and defense looks. Let's get us a point guard that can actually run the offense, keep everyone involved, and kind of force everyone to their more natural position, right? Let's see what it looks like with some size, some shooting, right? Those are things that we can look at and hope to see from the Bulls. But like I said before, it all starts tonight at the NBA draft. I've had my... Ups and down moments on if the Bulls are going to trade into this draft. We've gone over some selections that the Bulls could make if they do get that number 23 pick or move in anywhere in the draft. But do not be surprised tonight if we may see a change or if a lot of staying the same. And how this next two weeks shakes out for the Chicago Bulls is going to tell us, for me, I think, a lot of at least what the next few years are going to look like for the Bulls. Free agency starts on the 30th. We're eight days away from free agency. Uh, And then seven days after that, teams can start signing deals. Officially, officially start signing contracts. So the next two weeks are going to be hugely important for the present and the future of the Chicago Bulls. And as we start to look, the ones that are worried about running it back, the ones that want to see a blow up, right? The ones that want to see rebuild, retool, whatever it is. We're going to start seeing that here shortly. And I hope that ultimately whatever deals that they do or don't make work out, right? Whatever this is, I want to see it work out for this team. I have my doubts. I have my concerns. I have my ways of looking at what AK and Eversley have done. But ultimately, I know that some people look at this this team and say that it's devoid of talent. I don't agree with that. I think when you look at Zach, yeah, a number two probably on the championship team, but still a very talented player, a player that could be top 10 in the league in scoring. You look at Nikola Vucevic and what he could be if he actually was utilized by a coach that had half a brain to know how to use a post player of Nikola Vucevic's skill set. Uh, uh, Patrick Williams, uh, another year of waiting on that growth, that leap from Patrick Williams. Kobe showed some signs of development last season, but 
is it going to be something consistent or was it just a contract year, right? Dale and Terry, the rook, the, the, the one that we barely got to see in, but we see so much promise in what he can bring as an energy defender and maybe even the upside is being the score eventually in the NBA. There are so many questions around this team and it's up to the front office and coaching staff to develop, bring that vision to light and to have a path forward. And so while some are doubting the Bulls' vision, all right, AK, you got the, the gloves are off. You're now in full control. What way, what way are you leading this franchise? What way are you leading this fan base? You've talked a good game and said the Bulls fans deserve more. Well, this is hopefully going to be the first night in us finally starting to get the more that you say we deserve. That's my time for today. Make sure you guys are following the show at Bull Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullcentralpod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for our weekend mailbag episodes, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related because of you guys and like I like to end everything on. Go Bulls. Love you guys. See Red if you can, y'all. Be here for the live stream tonight going down during the draft, and I'll see you guys next time I feel like making a video. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of The Breaks, Breaks Media. Media.